Hello everyone, I took 100 times the recommended daily allowance, or RDA, of this vitamin, which is technically a hormone for 90 days. This was done as part of a treatment plan for multiple sclerosis, which is an autoimmune disease involving the demyelination of nerve cells in the central nervous system. This treatment plan is still experimental and is not accepted by the mainstream medical community. Make sure you stick around for the whole video because I'll be sharing which hormone I've been taking, as well as how I'm feeling since the beginning of my treatment. There are many conventional medicines out there for treatment of multiple sclerosis, but I wanted to try an option that I believe to have fewer side effects. I've been taking over 100 times the RDA of vitamin D for more than 90 days now. Vitamin D is actually a hormone, and the role of hormones in the body is that of a messenger. Vitamin D is a super hormone because it's believed to have positive effects throughout the entire body. Over 25,000 different functions of our cells depend on adequate levels of vitamin D, which you just can't get from your diet. The best source of vitamin D is direct exposure to the sun. If you are inside and getting sunlight through a window, it is not the same as the window blocks out the UV radiation. An interesting fact is that the instance of autoimmune disease increases proportionally with the distance away from the equator. This has led a lot of people to believe that lack of sun exposure or vitamin D is linked to autoimmune diseases. Vitamin D happens to be the most important immunomodulators of the entire body. And there is a resistance to vitamin D in populations who have autoimmune diseases. This resistance to vitamin D occurs because of polymorphisms or small mutations within the genetic code. A person who has just one of these polymorphisms is less resistant to vitamin D, whereas a person carrying two of these polymorphisms would be more resistant. Back in the 1990s, Brazilian doctor Cicero Coimbra started to notice these apparent links between autoimmune diseases like fibromyalgia, ulcerative colitis, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, etc. with vitamin D. He developed a protocol where he recommends individuals to take 1,000 international units of vitamin D per kilogram of body weight. If interested in reading up on this subject yourself, I recommend the book Multiple Sclerosis and Lots of Vitamin D, My 8-Year Treatment with the Coimbra Protocol for Autoimmune Diseases by Anna Claudia Domain. Many people have found success and relief of their symptoms through this protocol. This book contains many real-life accounts of healing from a variety of autoimmune conditions through the Coimbra Protocol. There are several requirements and recommendations within the Coimbra Protocol. There is follows. Avoidance of food that's rich in calcium like dairy and fortified foods such as almond milk. This is because vitamin D is associated with the absorption of calcium in our bodies. Another important point to mention is the parathyroid and the hormones that it manufactures. A function of the parathyroid gland is to constantly monitor the level of calcium within the blood. If calcium levels drop, the parathyroid sends a message telling the bones to release calcium into the blood. So all in all, on this protocol, it's very important to monitor calcium levels. One of the main goals of the Coimbra protocol is to lower the parathyroid hormone, or PTH, to the lowest optimal level. In this specific circumstance, it's my understanding that we want the PTH levels to be as low as possible because the lower the amount of PTH, the less calcium is being leached from our bones. And also, the lower PTH levels indicate that vitamin D is actually performing all of its functions optimally. Another requirement of the Coimbra protocol is 30 minutes of exercise at least three times a week. This is due to the calcium being leached from the bones due to higher vitamin D concentrations. Aerobic exercise and moving your body has been shown to keep your bones strong and healthy, and that's why it's recommended in this protocol. Another recommendation of this protocol is to drink at least two and a half liters of liquid, preferably water, each day, which allows for more frequent urination and allows the kidneys to be flushed out, which can be preventative of kidney stones. Under the Coimbra protocol, or any health regime requiring you to take more than the recommended daily allowance of a substance, frequent blood and urine analysis is required. Just to be clear, it's necessary to be under medical supervision in order to start this treatment. The main purpose of these tests is to monitor the blood calcium levels, thyroid hormones, and the health of the liver and the kidneys. There are certain risks 
that are involved in this therapy that are mitigated by the recommendations, such as low calcium intake, increased water intake, and exercise. Some risks of this treatment include hypercalcemia, which is too much calcium in the blood, and renal issues such as kidney stones. Since I started the treatment, I'm feeling pretty good. My symptoms are lessened since out of the hospital. One thing I've noticed is that I used to have really intense bouts of dizziness, which has definitely gotten better since the beginning of the treatment. In addition, I've also detected a positive change in my mood. These changes may be due to other diet lifestyle changes and other supplements I've been taking. Other supplements I am taking are vitamin K2, which is probably one of the most important because vitamin K2 directs the calcium in your body where it's supposed to go. NAC, which is N-acetylcysteine, which helps with the detoxification of the liver and kidneys. Alpha lipoic acid, a powerful antioxidant. Coenzyme Q10, flaxseed oil, turmeric, and a specialized multivitamin called MS Support, which contains choline bitartrate, magnesium, vitamin B2, folic acid, vitamin B12, chromium, and selenium. Although I do feel a bit better than before, I'm still experiencing symptoms. I experience numbness and tremors, spasticity, fatigue. I'm still having the occasional dizziness and headaches, balance issues, and issues with my gait. My mobility is still good, but I feel that my symptoms, especially relating to my feet and my legs, become worse with prolonged standing. It's been said that you have to be on this treatment for a while for all the benefits to show up. I will definitely be giving updates in the future of my progress and how I'm feeling and the overall course of my treatment. That's all for this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Victoria Goadsby, and I wish you all the best on your healing and self-growth journey.